Quest to College. Math 265A. And um, we are going to do some optimization. I'm Joe Vasta. We'll do some nine problems for 4.9. Um, your homework is going to be a handout and also some book work. So let's start off with optimization. Um, optimization is finding the minimum and the maximum of certain real life problems. And at first we have some problems that aren't so real life, but we'll get going with these. Okay, what two real numbers whose difference is 100 have the smallest possible product? We're gonna round answers to two decimal places if necessary. And so that's what we want to do. We want the smallest possible product. So my goal is this guy right here, product. And we want two real numbers. We don't know what they are. I'm going to call them X and Y. So all of our optimization problems will start off with an equation and we want the smallest possible product. What we want to do with this product here is we want to find the minimum. We want to minimize it. Okay, and with all these optimization problems, or most of them, we're going to have to come up with another equation that has x's and y's in it. Now look, look at this part right here that has the 100. It says what two real numbers whose difference is 100? Difference means subtracting them. So over here, I'm going to go x minus y equals 100. And of course, I could have gone y minus x uh, as long as I'm sub subtracting them. Okay, so here is the deal. We have two letters over here, and when we're trying to find the minimum, we'd like to take the derivative, but we only want, like, x is on the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do over here, so, so I want to get rid of this, what I'm going to do over here is solve for y, and then I'll be able to plug it in there. So when I solve for y, I end up getting x minus 100 equals y, or we can write it as y equals x minus 100. We're going to go ahead and plug that into the y. So let's see what we get. We get P equals X times X minus 100. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that X through, distribute. So I have X squared minus 100 times X. Since I'm trying to find the minimum, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. The derivative of P with respect to X is 2x minus 100. Okay, so what am I going to do with this derivative here, this 2x minus 100? I'm going to go ahead and find the critical numbers by setting it equal to 0. So let's solve that equation. 2x equals 100. x equals 50. Okay, so that's a critical number and I want to find out if this critical number is a local min or a max. There's two ways of doing this. One way is the first derivative test. I'm actually going to do the second derivative test, but it doesn't matter which way you, you use this. So the second derivative is 2. I'm going to plug 50 into the second derivative. Well, the derivatives, the output is always going to be 2. So we have 2, which is a positive number, which then tells us that this guy right here is a local min. Okay, so this was the second derivative test. Second derivative test. And so what does this tell me? This tells me I have found a minimum. That minimum is when x is 50. So the question says, what two real numbers whose difference is 100 have the smallest possible product? 
Well, I found one of the numbers. That one number is 50. The other number is y, and let's go ahead and find out what y is by plugging it into this equation, plugging 50 in for x. So I have 50 minus 100. So this is going to be negative 50. So the two real numbers whose difference is 100 would be 50 and negative 50. And there's the answer to our first optimization problem. They're all going to kind of work out the same where you're going to have um, more than one different kind of letter on the right hand side here that you're trying to minimize or maximize and then you're going to have to come up with another equation, solve for one of those letters and put it back in there and then hit it with the derivative gun. So the first one may seem a little scary, you know, like, whoa, what is happening here? Um, but I think I'll do another one and you'll see that these are not going to be as bad, maybe, if, if, especially if you do your homework and practice. Okay, so problem number two. And once again, this, this, this kind of was a worthless problem. I mean, really, how many people are doing this in the real world except the math teachers and math students? We're going to actually get to some real world problems pretty soon. But this one may not be one that you would like as a real world problem. Problem number two says of all right triangles with an area of 20 and hypotenuse 5, which one has the minimum perimeter? Give the dimensions. Wow. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to draw a right triangle. And it says the right triangle has an area of 20. They don't give any units, so we're not going to put our answer in units at the end. And the hypotenuse is the longest side of that triangle. It is 5. It's a right triangle, so there's see, so it's right triangle. There's a right angle there. And we don't know these sides here. So this is x and this is y. Those are the dimensions. Um, so it's asking us to give the dimensions. We're going to try to find x and y where we will have a minimum perimeter. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing I did in the other problem, except P is not going to stand for a product. It's going to stand for perimeter. Do we know how to find the perimeter of an object? Well, the perimeter of the object is if you're a little bug and you take a walk around the outside of that object, how far did you travel? That is the perimeter. So the perimeter of this right triangle is going to be, let's see, x plus y plus 5. x plus y plus 5. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to, here it says minimum, we want to minimize the perimeter. Now, to minimize the perimeter, we usually take the derivative, but there are two letters on the right-hand side, and so I can't quite do the derivative yet. I'm going to go back over here and say, is there information I did not use? Oh, this right here, area 20. So what is the area of a triangle? It is one-half base times the height. That is the area of that triangle. And this is a right triangle, so it's the same thing. And we know that this equals the area, which is 20. Okay, so I'm trying to get rid of the y right there. Therefore, I'm going to solve for y right there. So how do I solve for y? I multiply the equation by 2. So I have xy equals 40, and then y is going to equal 40 divided by x. So that is what I'm going to plug in for y. So notice, look, I've got the red arrow and the circles, and you see from the last problem, it's kind of the same thing. It's a different problem, but it's kind of like the same problem. Um, recipe same steps. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and plug that in there. We have the perimeter is x plus 40 over x plus 5. Okay, I'm, I have to take the derivative and maybe I want to rearrange that x so it looks a little nicer. So this is perimeter equals x. So I can do the power rule of derivatives plus 40 x to the negative 1 plus 5. Okay, so now it's time to take out our derivative gun and zap that with the derivative gun. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 40x to the negative 1, well that negative 1 jumps in front, so I have minus 40x to the, I subtract 1, negative 2, plus this right here is 0. Okay, so the derivative is 1 minus 40 over x squared. Okay, so I want to get myself a common denominator, and that common denominator for both of those terms happens to be x squared. So I'm going to multiply this one by x squared on the top and on the bottom. So the derivative is x squared minus 40 all over x squared. Okay, so the next step, of course we might have to go on another piece of paper, is to find the critical, the critical numbers of this function, p equals. Okay, so actually here was, this is the function that we changed it to. We want to find the critical numbers. To find the critical numbers, that's where the derivative is zero or where the derivative is undefined. So, where the derivative is 0 would look like this. It would look like x squared minus 40 equals 0. And where the derivative is undefined, that's where x squared equals 0. So this one over here would give me x equals 0. And guess what? I cannot even have x equals 0 for two reasons. For It cannot be a critical number because I have undefined right there. And the second reason is we're, we're not really going to have the leg of a triangle being length zero. So this right here is a dead end. Dead end. So let's take a look at this one right here. I add 40 to both sides. So I get x squared equals 40. I take the square root. This is x equals plus or minus root 40. And i um, got to remember that my x is the length of a triangle, so we can't see the triangle in the camera anymore. I think I pushed it off the thing. So we're only going to go with root 40. Okay, so now I'll simplify that root 40 at the end. Okay, right now I'll just keep it like that. Um, so what are we what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and figure out what if this thing is a min or a max. So hmm, the, the last time I used the second derivative test, this time I'm actually going to use the first derivative test. Okay, and really in my notes that I had, I was actually going to use the the second derivative test, but I figured. We'll spice it up a little. This is how math teachers spice it up. So it's actually pretty pathetic. This is how I spice up my life here. I go ahead and draw a number line, and then here's the derivative, p prime. And um, this number right here, the square root of 40, that is going to be between 6 and 7. Okay, in fact, I can on my calculator, I'll go the square root of 40. That's about 6.3. Okay, so this is you know, about 6.3. Now, I could be taking the second derivative and doing the same thing with the second, you know, giving me the same results. This is approximately 6.3. And then I'm going to go ahead and I have the derivative here. So I'm going to put like 1 
into this, and on the top I get a negative, and on the bottom I get a positive. So if I put 1 in there, I end up getting negative over a positive, which is negative. And then I put like 10 in there, and I end up getting 100 minus 40. So I get a positive on the top and a positive on the bottom. Positive over, over positive is positive, which means the graph goes down and then up, which tells you that 6.3, or the square root of 40, is, if it goes down and up, tells you it's a minimum. Now, if we look at the, what we're trying to do, we are trying to minimize this. We are trying to find um, which one, the dimensions of a right triangle that will give a minimum perimeter. So it looks like what we've just done here. Let's go ahead and rearrange it so it looks like this. Because I found the square root of 40 um, to be a minimum. And so now I have to find out the y value. Now I can find the y value by plugging root 40 into this. Okay, so I, I'm going to circle this so we don't lose it. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. So x is root 40 y is going to be 40 over root 40. I'm going to rationalize the denominator because I see lots of 40s there and something might happen here. And then I end up getting 40 root 40 on the top. And root 40 times root 40 is 40, lots of 40s. I've never said 40 this many times. I don't think I have. And so y is actually equal to the square root of 40. So what do you know? y and x, they're, they're going to be the same. So to find the one that has the minimum perimeter, we, we are supposed to give the dimensions, and that's what the dimensions are. The dimensions are going to be the x's and the y's. We can even throw the 5 in if you want. So my answer is going to be, um, well, let's just put the legs on. The legs of the triangle will be, now let's simplify these. Okay, so root 40 is actually 2 root 10, so it's going to be the, the legs of this triangle are 2 root 10, and 2 root 10, and those legs will give a minimum perimeter. Okay, so that is that completes the problem. That's what they asked. Which one has the minimum perimeter? Give the dimensions, and you'll get problems like this. Problems like 1 and 2 on the first few problems of the book work. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a classic calculus problem. And so let's see if we can do the next problem, which is problem three. This is the classic one with the farmer. Maybe we should have used rancher, but oh well. We're, we'll just call this person a farmer. And um, many calculus students have become frustrated with problems like this. So on the handout, there's a lot of drill and kill with these kinds of problems here. A farmer with 500 feet of fencing wants to enclose a rectangular field and then divide it into 20 equal pins. See the diagram below. So this is what they want to do with their 500 feet of fencing. What are the field dimensions that maximize the area? Now, why is that important? Because if you've got 500 feet of fencing, you want to do the best job you can to fit the most animals within those pens. Okay, so this is where it might help to know some calculus so we can do these problems and then we'll have um, the field dimensions and then we can go ahead and cut the fence and set it up so it works out really good. What is the largest area? That's what they want to know. Okay, so the field dimensions, we have this guy right here, which, you know, we don't know what it is. And when you don't know what something is in math, you call it a variable like x. I'll say that has length x. And this right here, whoops, has length 
y it just barely fits on the paper now could you do this problem differently and say oh this has x and that has x and x and then of course this would be one two three four yeah you can do this problem differently this this is the way i'm going to do the problem and so we want to maximize the area of this okay so here it is the area of this thing right here is going to be well it's a it's a rectangle it's going to be x times y okay and what do we want to do with that area we want to maximize it so I'll, this is our first maximization problem well, let's go ahead and do this now normally I would want to hit this with a derivative but I can't there's two letters on the right hand side when you hit multivariable calculus you'll learn how to hit derivatives um, hit things with a derivative gun with more than um, one letter on the right hand side but for now we we can't do that so now we need some other another equation that we have to cough up okay so what information did we not <clears throat> did we not use well 20 equal pins we kind of didn't write 20 down at all and we also didn't use 500 feet of fencing so let's just imagine we're going to build this thing your fence you're going to need to have one that has length x oh wait you're going to need another one that has length x there so there's two of them three four five so it looks like for the fencing your fencing is going to be 5x you know like if x was something like 30 you would have to go 5 times 30 you'd need 150 feet to just to do the horizontal parts now the vertical parts and I'm calling them horizontal and vertical because of the way it is in the picture uh, how many Y's am I going to need well let's count them 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what we have here is this expression represents how many feet of fencing that I will need and so did they tell us how many feet yes it was 500 okay so now we're in the same situation where oh I don't know I'd like to get rid of that and I could if I solve for y over here so let's solve for y on this equation right here so I'm going to subtract a 5x so 6y equals 500 minus 5x and then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 6 y equals 500 minus 5x all over 6 look at this I'm not going to bring up the other problems but this is exactly kind of the same diagram we saw in the other problems where we have an arrow and we look we solve for y and then we plug it back into this equation so let's go ahead and write our area now the area equals x times this junk here so we'll write that junk right here so 500 minus 5x all over 6 Okay, so the area equals, let's see, it's going to be 500 over 6x minus 5, 6x squared. Let's write it one more time because we can, we, we probably should reduce this if we can, and it's not going to reduce that much. I think 2 goes into both of those, so 250 over three and of course that's x minus five six x squared okay so now what do i want to do with this right here i want to find the maximum how do i find the maximum i pull out the derivative gun and fire and see what i end up getting i end up getting the derivative of a constant times x is just that constant and then I have the derivative of this thing right here, which is going to be minus, we bring the two down and then, okay, so let me just go ahead and do that. 
so this is 2x. So it looks like right here the derivative happens to be 250 over 3 then we have minus, and the 2 and 3 are going to cancel here, so look at this. So that's going to become, uh, the 2 and 3, I said, I, okay, that was a little slip there. The 2 and the 6 will cancel, you get a 1 and a 3, so this is going to be minus 5 thirds x. So that's what we have here. Now we don't have any variables on the bottom, so I'm not, I mean, you could, we could put this together with one denominator, that's all right, but what's my next step that I'm gonna do on this? I'm gonna set a prime equal to zero to find the critical numbers. And so that's what I'll do here. So we'll bring up the work right over here. So this is 250 over three minus five thirds x equals zero. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by three. I'm going to put the five x on the other side. So, you know, I'll write an intermediate step. I have five x equals 250. So it looks like x is going to equal 50. Okay, so that right there is a critical number. Now, is it a local min or a local max or nothing? How do we find out? One of two ways, I can do the first derivative test where I put a number line. I did that on the last problem. I'm actually gonna do the second derivative test. Now, how am I deciding that? Because the, it looks really easy to take the second derivative. The second derivative happens to be zero minus five thirds. So minus five thirds, which means if I plug 50 into the second derivative, I end up getting negative 5 thirds, which is a negative number. Therefore, that tells me that x equals 50 is a max. It's a max location. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to maximize this. So what does that tell me here? That tells me this is good, this is good to go, we found it. And they want the field dimensions. So they want x by something with y in it. How can I find y now, now that I have the x value that will work? I'm gonna plug it right here into this equation that's circled. So um, abusing arrows here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Will I be able to fit this all on this piece of paper? I don't know. So I have y equals 500 minus five times X all over six. Okay, so what do we have? Um, we have 500 minus five times 50. And so that's gonna give me 250 on the top and six on the bottom. Which, is, which will reduce to 125 over three. Okay, I think, I know I'm almost done with this, but there's a few other things that I wanna write, so I might as well just use another piece of paper here. Um, so it looks like my X value is 50, and my Y value is 125 over three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to round these guys because if you were working, okay, so let's, we can, we can keep the picture here now that we know what the values are. If you were working on here, you were that farmer, you were gonna cut the fence. You know, the 125 over three, it would be nice to have that as a nice number. And um, the very first piece of paper, I believe, says round answers to two decimal places if necessary. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna um, say that this thing happens to be, you'll see on the calculator, we end up getting 125 divided by three, which is 41.6666666. So it's gonna be 41, two decimal places would be point. Instead of going 0.66, we're gonna go 0.67. And so we have just found the first part. What are the field dimensions that maximize the area? You would say 50 feet 
um, by, or you could just do that for by, 41.67 feet. Now the next question says, what is the largest area then? And so there's a few ways of doing this. One way is to actually plug the 50 back into here. But another way is here's x here and here's y. I know that the area of this is just multiplying those two numbers together. So the area then, the maximum area, I'll just say area, is you multiply those together on your calculator and um, let's see, 41.67 times 50, I'm ending up getting 2,083.50. So it, it just, it actually, I don't need to round it because of, I just multiply those numbers together. And then this is squared feet, feet squared. And so there it is. Now here's something just to be careful with on your homework. If you went ahead and kept that one in your calculator where it's at 41.666666 and multiplied it by 50, you would end up getting something that looks close to this. It would be um, 2,083.33 squared feet. Now that's actually more accurate, the, the one that I said, but in the real world, what you're going to do is you're, you know, when you're when you're measuring things out, you're you're usually going to round, and because we round it, this answer is going to be just slightly off, and that's the way the answers are going to be presented on the handout. So, first go round those guys. This one couldn't be rounded, but round that guy, and then multiply them together, and those are the those are the answers you'll see because that's what's happening in the real world. Okay, so. Um, you know, let me just put a little note on that, like, if you don't round, then you end up getting 2083.33, and then you end up rounding here, actually, you know, feet squared, okay? So in the homework, we're going to be rounding those before we do the area or before we do the cost, which would happen to be an application on another problem. So that is problem number three, the famous farmer problem where he's making some pens in a rectangular field. And um, this is just a classic problem. Let's go ahead and do another classic problem. It's going to be maybe the same farmer and it looks like this. So remember, we're doing nine problems for optimization. And maybe for this one, you wanna see, because we've already done three optimization problems, maybe you wanna see if you can get the answer on this problem by pausing. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this problem's all about. A farmer wants to fence an area of 200 square feet. Okay, so they're telling us what the area is. Last time they didn't, we were trying to find the maximum area, but this person knows he wants 200 square feet in a rectangular field. And then he wants to divide it into 20 equal pins. So it kind of looks very similar to our last picture. Look at that. Except now we're gonna get a little more real world. <laughs> The field is adjacent to a road. See the diagram below. The fencing next to the road must be sturdier and cost $50 per foot. Whereas the other fencing, you know, anything that's not right against the road, costs just $20 per foot. What are the field dimensions? Okay, so we're still trying to find the field dimensions. That Minimize, so this is a minimization problem. Minimize the cost, what is the minimal cost? So you might be looking at this feeling a little overwhelmed. I think what I start to do with, on all these problems is the thing that I'm trying to minimize or maximize, I try to write an equation. And so I'm trying to minimize the cost. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we did in the last problem. I'll try to use maybe a different color for this. Across here, see the road's in the way, so I'm going to put this up here. Across here, we're going to call that length x. And then down here, 
we'll call that length y. And there's more than one way of labeling the x and y. I think this might be the simplest way. So let's figure out the cost for this. Um, first of all, let's kind of take this one separately. It, it, this is supposed to be thicker here, and if you know, maybe maybe you don't see that that fencing is thicker. So hate to, to upset this, but oh well. So the, that fencing looks like that. It's a thicker, more expensive fencing because there's a road there. Okay. So let's go ahead and take care of the cost for that. Okay. So if this was like I don't know, 50 feet, it would be, well, I used the wrong, thing. let's say it was 60 feet, it would be 60 feet times 50. But it's X, so, we're, so the cost of just this thick part right here is going to be 50 times X. So I'm going to write that down, 50 X. Okay, plus, things are going to cost a little more now. Now, we still have to buy how many more X's? This guy right here, one, two, three, four. So you're gonna buy four X. And that's gonna cost $20 per foot. So let's go ahead and put a 20 there. But you're also going to buy how many Y's? One, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna buy six Y's. And so look, that there, all that is going to cost $20 per foot, whereas the one next to the road is $50. Okay, let's go ahead and, I don't know what to do. Let's, let's multiply through. Okay, so we have 50x plus, we'll distribute the 20, plus, what is that, 80x plus, and then this is going to be 120y. So the cost for this is going to be 80 plus 50 is probably like 130, 130x plus 120y. Okay, so that is the cost. Wow. But the cost I'm trying to minimize. I want to hit it with the derivative, but there, is, there happens to be two letters there. And so maybe it would be great if this letter wasn't here and there was an X or an expression with X's in it instead. So now I've got to cough up another equation. And there was some there was some information I didn't use here, and that was that there should be this should have an area of 200. Okay. So area, this whole thing has to have an area of 200. We know to compute the area, you go X times Y. So x times y ha happens to be 200. So on this one, I'm going to solve for y. y equals 200 over x. This is going to go in right there where the y is. And then my cost function will just have x's in it. So look what I have. I have 130x plus 120 and then we have times y so this is 200 over x so the cost function is 130 x plus this is going to be maybe 24,000 just multiplying those numbers together and then this is all over x. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take the derivative of this. to take the, Before I take the derivative, I'm going to bring that x on the top. So the cost is 130x plus 24,000x to the negative 1. Okay, I want to minimize this function, find any local min that might be associated with that. And in order to do that, I think I need another piece of paper. Okay, so we'll continue here. I know we can't see the whole problem there, but um, this is really what we're focusing on. So the derivative of the cost happens to be, well, the derivative of 130x is 130. 
And then this guy right here, you're going to bring the negative in front and write that as x to the negative 2. So when everything's all settled, it's going to be minus 24,000 all over x squared. So there's the derivative. And um, what do we have? We have, I'm going to get a common denominator like I did in a, a previous problem. So this is going to be 130 x squared minus 24,000. This is all over x squared. To find the critical numbers, I set the top equal to zero. And I set the bottom equal to zero. Setting the bottom equal to zero gives me zero, which in, if you're looking at this function right here, the cost function, it is not in the domain. So it can't be a critical number. And then also you wouldn't want to have x is zero because that would um, defeat the point. You wouldn't have an area and you would just, you would just be building six really long fences um, right next to each other. I, I suppose you could do that, but that, so we're not going to allow for that. And, um, oh, see, I forgot to say set this thing equal to zero. So this is where we're going to get probably a nice critical number here. So it looks like I have, when you're done setting this thing equal to zero, you take the positive square root. It gives me the square root of um, 24,000 over 130. I'm just going to write that as 2,400 over 13. And so that is a critical number. And um, if you put that in your calculator and round to two decimal places, I guess we don't need all that anymore. You'd end up getting, so this is approximately equal to, let me, I should just verify that my calculations are correct. 2400 divided by 13. I end up getting 13.59. So 13.59. And that is the x. Now, how do I get the y value? Oh, well, actually, before I check, I'm trying to minimize the cost. And I want to check to see if this is going to be a local min. I think the way I'll check this one is not by doing the second derivative test. I'm going to do the first derivative test. First derivative test. I'm going to make a number line here. I'm going to put C prime on the number line and I'm going to put like 13.59. I'm going to put a number like, let's see if I put a number like 10 in there, or let's say if I put a number like one in there, I'm going to get 130 minus 24,000. That's definitely going to be negative. So the graph is going down. And then I put like, a number like a million in there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to put in there. Maybe 24,000 for or the square root of 24,000. In any case, you can you can verify that that's going to be positive, which means the graph goes down and then up, which makes this guy a local min. Okay, so we're pretty um, confident that we found the x that's going to minimize this. And now what I want to do is find the y. So in order to find the y, I'm going to go ahead and take this 13.59 and go 200 divided by that. So when I do that, so y is going to equal, that's from this equation here, 200 divided by 13.59 which gives me approximately 14.72 for the y value. So this, this equals y. We'll just say equals y. Okay, so my um, what they're asking me now is what are the field dimensions? Here's the field right here that will minimize the cost. The field dimensions that will minimize the cost will be when x is 13.5. Five nine feet, and y is 
14.72 feet. And of course you can divide by, you know, you can divide x by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, by 5, and divide y by 1, 2, 3, 4 to, to figure out like what these little things are, but they never ask that. But they also ask what is the minimal cost? Now I'm going to go ahead and plug these two numbers into the equation now. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to plug them, where am I going to plug them? I'm going to plug them into this equation here, so 130 times x. Okay, I'll actually do that on my calculator. 130 times 13.59 plus 120 times 14.72. And I'm getting, so for this cost here, I'm getting 3000 Five hundred thirty-three dollars and ten cents when I plug it into the cost, and so there it is. So that's what I need. Now, if you had used this cost equation right here, and you just put the x right here, I think you might get something that's a little off and that's going to be more of the exact answer. So if you didn't round these or whatever, so I'm rounding these and I'm plugging these back into my original equation. And so this is actually what you would pay for all that fencing, which is a lot of money, but you know, materials do cost a lot of money. So that is problem number four, um, the farmer with the fencing pins and actually cost on this one we minimize the cost which is good so if you just went willy-nilly like you're the farmer and you didn't have calculus and you just said oh let's just make y be 20 and then figure out what x is from there you would end up because of the way this fence costs you would end up paying more for the same area of 200 square feet so that's why, I mean, this, this is just a, a really good example to show you how calculus can help you save money and pay the least amount by designing things um, that way. So hopefully you can see some use for calculus. And I know some of you are like, yeah, but I'm not going to be a farmer or whatever. Um, that's all right. There's other things that calculus does. And here is another example. So this is the open box example, and you get some of these in the, um, on the handout actually. So an open box is to be made from a three foot by five foot rectangular piece of material by cutting equal squares from the corners and turning up the side. So we're making an open box. What does the picture look like? Well, you have a rectangular piece of material, maybe it's cardboard, maybe it's metal, something, and it's five feet by three feet. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut out the corners. You're going to cut equal squares out of each of the corners. And that's what it says and you're going to get rid of that material. So you're going to get rid of that. And then what you end up doing is then you'll have maybe if you're thinking cardboard, maybe metal is just thinking too much outside the box here. But you can do this with metal. Then you're going to fold up those sides, so that blue rectangle becomes the bottom of the box, and then these guys become this rectangle here. Those four little skinny rectangles become the sides of the box, and that's what you're doing. Okay, now find the side length of the removed squares that will maximize the volume of the box. What is the maximum volume? Okay, so these parts that you cut off, we don't know what they are, but you're trying to determine them. I'm going to put an X there. So we're trying to find that right there. And so how do we go about this? Well, 
they want us to maximize maximize the volume so do we know the volume of a box the volume of the box of a box is length I'll just go L times width times height that's the volume of a box okay the length and the width we're gonna get from the that rectangle there and so this rectangle would be incorrect this blue rectangle to put a five there because five goes all the way from here all the way to there so we're gonna have to subtract off an X and a, maybe another X so this is gonna be five minus two X and then in, in a similar fashion this guy right here is not going to be just a three I put that sideways. It's going to be this length right here is going to be three, and we're going to subtract off. I've got to turn this sideways to x's. And so when we do this, the volume is the length, which is the five minus two x. Times the width, which is three minus two x. times the height. Now what is the height of this box? Well when you fold up those those edges it's going to have a height of x. And so here's the beautiful part about this. We want to do the maximum volume and we only have one letter on the right hand side so we don't have to cough up another equation to try to get rid of an extra letter. We can just go ahead and multiply that out and then zap it with the derivative gun. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply it out first. When I multiply it out, I'm going to get 15. I'm foiling those two binomials there. And then we'll have a minus 6, minus 10. So this is going to be minus 16x. And then this is going to be plus 4x squared. Of course, there's x there. And then I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the terms as well, just because I, because why not? Okay, so I'm going to go, I like to have the, the degree, the, the leading term at the front here. So 4x cubed minus 16x squared plus 15x. Okay, so I'm trying to maximize this. So all I have to do is zap this thing with a derivative gun. So when I do that, now, some better teachers than me so you're the I'm, I'm like mediocre level i'm not that good of a teacher but like some teachers they cross all their t's and dot all their i's and i believe i actually do cross my t's and dot my i's like when i'm writing those letters but i mean with everything they would say oh well we over here we should put like what x can be and x has to be um, greater than zero so it says zero is less than x because you're going to cut something off but x has its limits it cannot be any more than well let's see if you if you went ahead and cut made x 1.5 you would end up having zero length on this so x we can't we're not going to want x to be any greater than 1.5 in fact we don't want x to be 1.5 so some teachers will say oh you should do that and that's probably a good thing for me to tell you. But anyway, it's not going to change anything down here. I mean, I had some momentum, so let's go back to this. I'm going to take the derivative. I have 12x squared, and then this one's minus 32x, and then this is plus 15. This equals, oh, we're going to set it equal to zero to find the critical numbers. To find the critical numbers, oh, now before we do that, this guy right here it might be interesting for you to put this on a graphing program like Desmos or something like that. This right here is one of those worthless polynomials that why are we graphing these things maybe from the last section? Well, because the graph of this polynomial will help. It, it actually describes the volume of this box. And as you change x, as x increases, and, and you're writing out that polynomial, you are um, changing the volume. So it's kind of neat. 
you know, I'm, we don't need the picture, so I'm not going to draw it because I, I think people are already overwhelmed with these types of problems. Um, you're going to find that when you're going to factor this, you're not going to be able to factor this. In fact, what's going to happen is you're going to have to do the quadratic formula. Okay, so the quadratic formula says x equals minus b, which is 32 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So on my calculator, I just went 32 squared. That's 1024. And then we have minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 15 times 12. So that's 720. This is all over 2a, which is 24. So let's see, minus 10, 24. Okay, so inside that square root I have, okay, so we have 32 plus or minus the square root of 304, 304. This is all over 24. Okay, well, what, what just so happens is that if you go ahead and crank these out, one of them is 0.61. And the other one happens to be 2.05. So maybe it's perhaps it was a good thing to look at this because the 2.05 is not in this range. Okay, so if you went ahead and did the second derivative test, I'll go ahead and do the second derivative test. I don't know, I'll, I'll put it right here, second derivative test. I would take the second derivative and this gives me 24x minus 32. If I put 0 0.61 in there, let's see, um, so 24 times 0 0.61 minus 32 gives me a negative number which means this guy right here is going to be a local max. And if I go ahead and put the one that we're really not interested in into this, um, I put that into the calculator, and I get, let's see, 2.05, I end up getting a positive number, which means this one's going to be a min. Now, if you went to graph this polynomial, you'd see at x equals 2.05, it's actually going below the x-axis, which is kind of indicating negative volume. So the polynomial doesn't make any physical sense outside that range. So our, um, it says, find the side length, that's that x, of the removed squares that will maximize the volume of the box. Well, what happens is the side length is 0.61 feet. And then it asks, what is the volume of the box? So where am I going to put this 0.61? So, I mean, there's, there's the x there, if you'd like. Um, I'm going to put that right here into this, into this volume thing. I don't know which. You can put it into any one of those. And so that will tell me what the volume is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say this is, I, I actually put it in already and I found out that the volume is going to be 4.10. Um, and then the units on this, since we're finding a volume, is not going to be square feet, it's going to be um, cube feet, feet cubed. And so there it is, you can maximize the volume of a box by doing this kind of stuff here. Um, so I'm going to pause this because this camera is about to turn off and then I'll come back and do the other four problems. Okay, so we have just finished problem number five. What I want to show you about problem number five is Remember we had said we had a maximum at x equals 0.61 and a minimum at 2.05. 2.05 was outside the range. And um, here's what the graph of this polynomial that I have circled looks like. And that max there, you know, we have the x-axis here. 
We also have over here is the y-axis or the v-axis which gives you the volume and there's the maximum. There's 0.61, that's how much of a corner to cut off. And then 4.1 is the maximum volume. Okay, so I decided to print out a graph between recording here. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few more problems here. Okay, so it looks like on this problem we're, we're talking about a poster. The, the top and bottom margins of a poster, that's what we're looking at this here, um, are three inches and the side margins are four inches. If the area of the printed material on the poster is fixed at 400 square inches, find the poster dimensions with the smallest area. Wow, smallest area. So we know that we have something called the area and we want to find the minimum. Okay, so let's draw a picture of the poster. So here's the poster and the top and bot bottom margins are three. And the side margins are each four. Okay, so here's this guy right here is three, and then we have three, and these are inches. This is four, and four. So that's our picture that we have. And um, what are we saying? It says the, um, the area of the printed material, okay, on the poster. So here, those are the margins. The printed area is going to be this stuff in here, okay? This is where the picture is going to be or the words. There's the printed area. It says the area of that printed area, um, printed material on the poster, is fixed at 400 square inches. Okay, find the poster dimensions with the smallest area. So the, the poster dimensions are the whole thing right here with the smallest area. So they didn't ask us to minimize the printed area. The printed area is 400. They're telling us to minimize the, um, the area of this whole poster. So what I'm gonna do, and there's a few ways of doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and let this printed area, the side of this printed area equal X, and then this part, the height of the printed area is Y. Now, of course, you could do it the other way and let this whole outside part be X and then this height of the whole poster be Y, but I'm going to do it this way. Um, the reason behind that, well, you'll see. Okay, then both ways are legitimate. So I want to minimize the, the area of the whole poster. So the, this right here has length not X now. This, because I've, I've designed my X to be just that right there, it's going to be um, X plus a little more, it's going to be plus 4 plus 4, so this is going to be X plus 8. And then this right here, the height of the whole poster, is going to be Y, and then we have to add for the margins 3 plus 3, so Y plus 6. So the area of this whole poster is going to be X plus 8 times Y plus 6. That's what I want to minimize, the area of that whole thing. Now, once again, when you're doing your homework, if you decided to let that equal X, the X plus 8, then in here you would have to write that that would be X minus 8 in there for, the, um, for that length. So I'm doing it this way, and I see that, oh, look, on this problem I have a Y that I want to get rid of. And there's some information that I didn't use, which was the 400 square inches. 400 square inches happens to be the area of the printed material. The printed material has area XY, length times width, and this is going to equal 400. So on this one here, I'm going to solve for Y and then plug it right there. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, uh, I'll come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and foil this out. It might actually be a little simpler. So I have x, y plus 6, x plus 8, y 
plus 48. Okay, so now I'm gonna put y's, I'm gonna put a y right here and a y right here. Once I find out what it is, and oh, I'm gonna find out what it is really soon. Y equals over here um, 400 over x. I'm gonna circle that in red and I'm gonna make an arrow pointing up to that. So now my area is x times the y value. So this is 400 over x. This is going to be plus 6x. And then we have plus 8y. So this is going to be 400 over x here. And then this is plus 48. So the area of the total poster is going to be, the x's there are going to cancel, I'm going to have 400 plus 6x plus, I'll multiply those together, I'll get 3200 over x, and then this is plus 48. The area equals, um, we're just going to go ahead and write this as 6x plus 3200x to the negative 1. I'm getting ready to take the derivative. And then this is going to be plus 448. Okay, so that is what I want to find the minimum of. And I just have x's there. So now I'm going to zap this with the derivative gun. The derivative gun is going to give me a 6. And then I'm going to do the power rule there. This is going to be minus 3200x to the negative 2. So I'll just go ahead and throw it right underneath like that. And the derivative of 448, that is 0. So this is what the derivative looks like. And what I'm going to do now with that, I'm going to get a common denominator and write it as 6x squared minus 3200 all over x squared. I'm going to try to find the critical numbers by setting the top and the bottom equal to 0. If I set the bottom equal to 0, I end up getting x equals 0. This is for the critical numbers. And you're going to find out that because of the original area equation, we cannot have x equaling 0. So this is a dead end. I'm going to set the top equal to 0. So I have 6x squared minus 3200 equals 0 and so I end up getting 6x squared equals 3200 and I think I'm going to use another piece of paper here Let me get one here it is so this gives me x squared equals 3200 over 6. x squared equals 1600 over 3. And um, when I take the square root of that, I'm going to get plus or minus. I only need the plus part. The square root of 1600 is 40. And the square root of 3 is the square root of 3. Okay, so this is really kind of what I have here. This gives me approximately, if you do this on your calculator, let me go ahead and do this. So we have 40 divided by the square root of 3 it gives me approximately 23. I'm not saying that's, that's what it is, but um, we're going to want to round our answers to two decimal places, but this is going to help me. Um, with this calculation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, see if this guy right here is a minimum or a maximum. I'm trying to minimize the area function and I'm hoping I'm, it's pretty much I'm confident that it's going to be a minimum but let's just check this. This is area derivative of area. So if I put a number like 1 into here, I'm going to end up getting 6 minus 3200. That's going to be negative. So the graph is going down. And then I go ahead and put a really big number in there. Um, you could do that in your calculator if you want. You're going to see that this is going to give you a positive, which means that 23 happens to be going down and up a minimum, which is exactly what we're trying to find. We are trying to find 
the minimum. Now, we have what x equals, which is a minimum. x is 40 over root 3. Now I'm going to find out what y is by looking at this equation. So y is going to be 400 over x. So it's going to be 400 over 1 multiplied by root 3 over 40. So we end up getting 10 root 3. So that's what y is. So to summarize our x and y, we have x is 40 over... Ah, have my way down here. Yes, I do. 40 over root 3. Okay, that's not working so good. Okay, there it is. 40 <laughs> over root 3. And y equals 10 root 3. Okay, wow. So we've just done a lot of stuff here. Um, let me go ahead and fold this because we only need half of this. It says the top and bottom margins, yada, yada, yada. So what are they ask, asking me to do? It says if the area of the printed material in the poster is 400, fixed at 400, find the poster dimensions with the smallest area. So we want the poster dimensions. We don't want X and Y. That's the printed material dimensions. We want the whole poster dimension. So the poster dimensions will be um, X plus 8. So this guy right here plus 8 and um, Y plus 6. So it's going to be, what is this? This is um, 10 root 3 plus 6. And we're going to plug those into our calculators and we're going to get, um, we're going to round to two decimal places. So the first one's going to give me 31.09. Okay, so I did that calculation already, inches. And then the other one's going to give me 23.32 inches. And that's actually what they wanted. So that's that by that. Those are the poster dimensions that will um, minimize. Oh, those are the dimensions, sorry, of the poster that will minimize the area with um, 400 being the fixed area of the printed material. So once again, we're doing optimization. There's many things in the real world that we would like to find the minimum or the maximum of. And um, this stuff just helps out a lot. So number seven is going to be one of those math problems where, you know, a lot of people don't care about. And you get some of these on the handout. So what I've been doing with number three through seven is those are the ones that you see on the handout. And then um, problems one, two, and eight, and nine, that's what you see in the book work. So here's a common question here. It says, find the point on the line y equals 3x minus 4 that is closest to the point 65. Write the point using fractions. So, wow, we want to find what this is going to be. Um, we have a point on the line and this. Now, I'm assuming that this point is not on the line. And if you actually go to check, you put 6 in for x, you get 18 minus 4, which is not 5. So could we actually graph this and, and look at the picture? Yeah, but we don't need to do that. What we want to do is we want to express this line a little differently. We're going to go out of our comfort zone, and that line is going to be x. I'm going to express it as an ordered pair comma y, and I'm not just going to put any y, the y has to be 3x minus 4. So we're not used to this, but this right here represents all the points on that line. It is pretty freaky, isn't it? Okay, but you'll have um, a few problems, probably four problems like this, and this is what you do, the first thing you do. 
You also have another point that is not on the line, which is 6, 5. So the question is, is if you have a point on the line and you have another point, do we know how to find the distance between two points? And the answer is yes, there's called something that's called the distance formula, which looks like this. So it looks like, I don't know if you remember this from pre-calculus, the distance equals the square root of x1 minus x, sorry, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's the distance formula. And um, I'm going to plug those, those numbers into the distance formula. Um, I'm going to go ahead and for some reason, I want to let this one be x2 y2 and this one be x1 y1 okay now you can do it anyway i'm going to plug those into the distance formula here so i have x2 which is x minus x1 which is 6 so we have x minus 6 squared plus y2 which is 3x minus 4 minus y1 so that's going to be minus 5 quantity squared Okay, I'm going to go ahead and simplify that a little. The distance equals x minus 6 quantity squared plus, what do we have here? We have 3x minus 9 quantity squared. Now, here's the thing that we're going to do. What we want to do is we want to minimize the distance between these two points. So we want to do the minimum. So that the next thing you want to do is maybe take out the derivative gun and zap that with the derivative. Now here is the deal. This, if I go ahead and square both sides, I end up getting d squared. So this is a little trick that will help with the algebra on this. d squared equals um, x minus 6 quantity squared plus 3x minus 9 quantity squared. Minimizing the distance um, is almost the same, you know, in terms of finding the x that minimizes the distance is the same as finding the x that minimizes the distance squared. So you can think of this, we'll just replace it with another letter like capital D, it's the same. You're going to get the same answer if you minimize this guy right here. Because they're only asking you to find the point. They're not actually asking you to find the distance. Now, if they were asking you to find the distance and we did it this way, we'd have to take the square root to get the distance. But they're just asking you to find the point that's on this line that is closest to 6, 5. So, um, you don't have to use this trick. A lot of teachers might just say, okay, right here we've got the distance, let's go ahead and zap it with the derivative, and then you've got this ugly square root and chain rule and all that stuff, and you know, that's cute. It, um, it will work, but it's going to be a lot more painful. So I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of this. Now I can multiply that out and write out what, what it is, or I can just use some chain rule here. I think the chain rule would be just good enough here. The derivative is 2x minus 6 times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. And then this one's going to be 2, 3x minus 9 to the 1 power, and the derivative of the inside is 3. Okay, getting out another piece of paper. We're anticipating um, more work on here. In fact, let's just get to the next piece of paper now. Let's go ahead and write out d prime equals um, 2x minus 12. So I think I have something like that. And then I have, um, I better just write that out an extra step here, 6 times 3x minus 9. And so this is 2x minus 12 plus 18x minus um, 54. So this gives me 2x, no, it's not 2x anymore. Um, I'm, 
it's going to be 20x. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So that's going to be 20x. And then that's going to be minus 64, 66, minus 66. So here is um, the derivative of capital D, which is really the distance squared. Um, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing equal to zero to find some critical numbers. And I end up getting x equals 66 over 20, which is 33 over 10. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the second derivative test to just make sure that that is a, um, gives me the minimum because I'm trying to minimize this. So the second derivative of this right here is 20. And so d double prime of 33 over 10 is still 20, which is positive, which tells me that this thing is a minimum. So this is the second derivative test. Okay, so it looks like we ended up getting the um, x equals 33 over 10. And now I have to find the y value. Well, here's the y value. y equals 3x. Okay, so coming up here, y equals 3x minus 4. So that's what I'm going to write. y equals 3x minus 4. So this is 3x minus 4. And so this gives me 99 over 10 minus 40 over 10, which is 59 over 10. And they'd ask me to write the answer using fractions. And so the point that is on this line that is closest to the point 65 is this one right here, the one I found, which is 33 over 10 comma 59 over 10 and that's the answer okay so once again this optimization problem on this one here by the time we wrote down this formula we didn't have X's and Y's on the right hand side and we were able to just use the derivative gun and get the problem done so there is the answer Two more problems for this optimization, and um, let's see what the next problem happens to be. Our last problem being the finale that deals with a piece of wire that's going to be cut. But this one is a little more mathy because you have a rectangle is constructed with its base on the x-axis and two of its vertices on the parabola y equals 48 minus x squared. Now, I think in your homework, you're going to have a rectangle that's going to be um, inside a semicircle with kind of the same sort of deal. What are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area? What is the area? So what are we going to do for this? I'm going to go ahead and draw this parabola. It's y equals x squared, then it gets flipped upside down and moved up 48, so it looks like this. So there's a parabola there. I know it looks kind of weird. Here's 48. And you're going to have a rectangle. Um, maybe it looks like this, like this, and this, and this. And that's going to be inside. So look, look what it says. It says its base is on the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. And um, two of its vertices, uh, the vertices would be these points on the rectangle, happen to be on this parabola y equals 48 minus x squared. So I am trying to find the dimensions of this rectangle with the maximum area. What is the area? Okay, so um, this actually, this length right here from the origins of this should be the same as that length there. I was a little sloppy about this. And um, I don't know what I should call these. Let's just call them, no, I don't want to get confused with this. So I'm going to call this L, that length, and then this is W. And so that's what I'm going to do there. Um, what are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area? What is the area? Okay, so we're trying to maximize 
the area of that rectangle. What is the area of that rectangle? It is length times width. We have two letters over here, so we now we have to come up with another equation with L's and W's in there and see what we have here. Um, so for this, we have um, the origin here. And what I'm going to do is ask, well, what is this point right here? That point right there, I mean, before you say, oh, it's just going to be LW, well, it's only going to not be all of L, it's only going to be half of L. So this is really um, L over 2 W. Okay, so that's, that's what that point right there is. And that point happens to be on this parabola. So let's write that in there. So the y value is what? W. And this is going to be 48 minus L over 2 squared. And I'm almost positive the book's going to do this differently um, if you have a solutions manual or whatever. But um, this, way, this way will work out, okay? So W equals 48 minus L squared over 4. So it looks like what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the W and write it in terms of L. And so let's go ahead and write out the area again. I'm trying to maximize the area of this rectangle. So I have L, then we have 48 minus L squared over 4. So the area equals 48L, and then some of you would have preferred X's, but we'll just do L's this time, minus um, L cubed over 4. So now I'm trying to maximize A, and now I just have one letter on the right-hand side. I'm going to hit everything with the derivative gun. A prime is 48. That's the derivative of 48L, and then this one's going to be minus three-fourths L squared. What am I going to do with the 48 minus three-fourths L squared? I'm going to set that thing equal to zero to find any critical points. Now when I do that, I'm solving for L squared, so I'm going to have three-fourths L squared equals a positive 48. I'm going to have, I'm going to multi divide by 3, so that's going to give me 16, multiply by 4, which will give me 64. So L squared is 64. Oh, by the way, I took this problem from your book. I think this is number 18 in your book. So what I end up getting then is L equaling plus or minus 8. And for sure, we're not going to go with the negative 8 because this is a, a length. For sure, I'm going to go with L equals 8 for my critical point. So that's what I'm going to do right here. So on this one, we have L equals 8. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check to see if this is a maximum or a minimum. We're hoping it's a maximum, and I'm going to go ahead and use the second derivative test. Second derivative test. I will use the second derivative test if the second derivative is going to look very easy to calculate. And in this case, it, it is. A double prime is. That's zero. And this is going to end up giving me um, minus three halves L. So minus three halves L. And we put eight in there. This is going to give me negative 3 halves 8, which is a negative number, which means that L equals 8, this guy right here, happens to be a max, which is exactly what we're trying to find. We're trying to maximize the area. Okay, so L is 8. How am I going to find the width? No, yeah, the width. I'm going to go right here to this circled equation. So W equals 48 
minus L squared, so this is um, 8 squared over 4. And so what do we end up getting here? 48 minus 64 over 4, 48. I should just take out the calculator minus, um, what is that, 16? And this gives me 32. Okay, so what, what, what are they asking us in this problem? Okay, so 32. This is the width and the length is 8. It said, what are the dimensions? Make sure it's not blurry. Okay. What are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area? Well, we just found that the dimensions happen to be 8. Are there units on this in this problem? No, there's not. So we're just going to say 8 by 32. So that's the first question right there. And the second question says, well, what is the area then? Now, you can go ahead and say, let's put 8 back into here or whatever, but it's probably easier to just go on um, length times width because that's the area of the rectangle. And so the maximum area you get will be, multiply those together. So if you did that on a calculator, I think you get 256. Well, there's no units here, so that's what we're just going to leave as our area. So that completes number 8. And really, it's kind of inconvenient that I have to... Um, use more than one piece of paper on these problems, but I don't want to just smush it so the the font size that I'm using so small that it's blurry on YouTube. So that's what it is. We are now going to go ahead and do one more problem and this will be our finale problem of optimization. Um, you'll get one like this in your homework. It's going to be a little different because it's going to involve a circle in your homework. Um, papers are going all over the place. This one does not involve a circle. And it says a piece of wire um, of length 10 is cut. And the resulting two pieces are formed to make a square in an equilateral triangle. Where should the wire be cut to maximize and to minimize the combined area of the square in the equilateral triangle? Wow, so they're actually asking us two questions. Let's go ahead and draw the piece of wire. The piece of wire looks like that. And so you're going to cut it somewhere. So let's just cut it right there. And then the first part is going to give us what? It's going to be a square. You're going to bend it into a square. And the second part, you're going to bend that into an equilateral triangle. So you're going to you're going to cut that and then you know this one's going to look like this. Here's a square and you're going to just like put that together. And, you know, we'll just we'll just say that has side S. And then this one you're going to bend it into an equilateral triangle and we'll say that has um side M. Okay, we're just kind of making up these letters now. Okay. Um where should the wire be cut to maximize the combined area and then to minimize the combined area? So wow, this is this is a crazy problem. Okay, so I think in your homework you have um same piece same thing. I don't think it's 10, it's some other length and you're going to be cutting it into two parts and one's going to give you a square and one's going to give you a circle. So, you pay attention on this one and that should help you with the homework. I guess the first thing that I want to do is um, we are trying to maximize and minimize the area. Okay, now we know the area of that squared, which is going to be s times s or s squared. And then we have to add that because you're trying to, let's just say, maximize the combined area here. So now we need the area of this. So the area of this is going to be a little bit trickier to do because what I'm going to do is realize this is a triangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw that and the area of a triangle is one half base times height. 
So this is going to be one half base times the height. Let's go ahead and put height here. Okay. In pencil. And maybe that's really hard to see, but I'm going to be erasing that pretty soon. So how do I find the height? Well, an equilateral triangle, let's just, it, it, all the um, angles will be 60 degrees. So let's focus on this triangle on the left hand side. It looks like it's a right triangle. This is 60, which and there is 90 and this is 30. Now with 30, 60, 90 triangles, you might have remembered from trig that if this guy right here is length one, then this guy right here will be length. I'm going to make sure that I do this right. So across from 30 is one. This will be two, and this will be the square root of three. Okay, so that's with the 30, 60, 90. But with this one, um, we have this length right here is not one. It is not M either. It's half of that. This is M over two, which means this right here would be two times M over two. And then this would be um, root three times M over two. So this is actually what we're looking for. That right there, let me bring out the orange pen here. That is the height of that triangle. So let me erase where it says height. And we'll replace it with um, root three over two times M, or we can say M root three over two. And so we have that like there. Okay, let's go ahead and write out the area. The area equals s squared plus root three. Two times two is four, and then we have m squared. Okay. The next thing we want to realize is this wire has to be cut. And so you've got to make a decision and say, well, if it's going to be cut here, we don't know how much we're going to cut it. And that's the whole thing. How, where should the wire be cut? So we're going to say that this part of the wire right here is X. And then the wire is 10 in terms of length. So this part right here has to be 10 minus X. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at perimeters. Let's put this thing in a cloud here because I don't think we need to go back into that cloud. And I want to know the perimeter of this. It's the perimeter is walking around it, so it's going to be S plus S plus S plus S. So the perimeter is four times S. But the perimeter is going to actually be how much wire you have cut for the square. So this is going to say x equals 4s. Or we can say that s equals x over 4. Okay, I'm going to circle that. The perimeter of this, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to fit it here, but I'll try. The perimeter of this triangle is actually 3m. And the perimeter of this one is going to is actually 10 minus x because that's how much wire you have. 10 minus x is 3m. And so what does m equal? m equals 10 minus x all over 3. Okay, so this is one of our more complicated problems. I'm going to replace the S with the X over 4 and the M with this expression, 10 minus X over 3. And it's going to be a mess, but let's go ahead and write it down. So this is going to be X over 4 
squared, and then plus root 3 over 4, and then this is going to be m squared, which is 10 minus x over 3 quantity squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little bit of algebra here. So this is going to be x squared over 16. Okay, that's what we have there. And then over here, look, we have, we have 3 squared on the bottom, which will give me 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So I have 36 and then root 3 there. And then when I FOIL out the top, I'm going to get 100 minus 20x plus x squared. Okay, so the area of um, these two shapes combined would be x squared over 16. And then the next one's going to be plus. 100 times this. So really that's going to be 50 over 18. Let's say 4 goes into both of those. So I think this the first one when I when I distribute that is going to be 25 root 3 over 9. And then the next one's going to be, let's see, I'm, I'm just kind of reducing fractions as I go. I know 4 goes into 20 and 4 goes into 36, so this is going to be minus 5 root 3 over 9 times x. And then the last one's going to be plus root 3 over 36 x squared. Whew. That expression gives me the area of the square and the equilateral triangle combined. And what do I want to do with this? I want to find the minimum and the maximum. Now before we, we go to the next piece of paper, um, let's go ahead and find a range on this. X can be as small as what? X can be as small as zero. And so in these problems with the wire, you can choose not to cut any wire for the square, but to, to use it all for the triangle. And vice versa, you could say, I'm going to go ahead and use it all for the square, which x could be as big as 10. Okay, so I know it doesn't say that, but in these problems, you that's kind of the, the thing that we should all know, even though it's not said. So that's pretty much what we have. We have this closed interval, and I think the next thing we should do is find the derivative, find any critical points, and then we'll test both 0 and 10 and any critical points and see which gives us the maximum area, maximize, and the minimum area. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so let's take the derivative of a. So a prime is, okay, 1 8 x. That's a constant, so it's gone. And then we have minus 5 root 3 over 9. And then the last one's going to be plus, the 2 comes out, cancels a little with the 36, and so we have root 3 over 18 x. So this is the derivative. I'm going to set it equal to zero to end up getting a critical number. Okay. So when I end up doing that, I'm going to multiply this equation um, by 72 to get rid of those denominators. So I have 9x and then let's see, 8 times 5, so minus 40 root 3, and then let's see, I think that is going to be 4 times plus 4 root 3x equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of algebra. You know, some of you might feel uncomfortable skipping all these steps. 4 root 3, and then I'm going to bring the 40, of, uh, 40 times root 3 to the right hand side, and I end up getting x is 40 root 
3 all over 9 plus 4 root 3. So if you put that into a calculator, it ends up giving me 4.3496. It was important to do that to make sure that that lies in this range here, 0 to 10. So what I'm going to do now, this is the extreme value theorem where we were finding um, absolute mins and maxes in a closed interval. I'm going to go ahead and go A of 0, A of 4.3496, and then I'm going to go A of 10 and see who the top dog is and who the um, bottom dog is. And this one's probably going to be an approximate. So I put this into the area, and the area, I went ahead and actually did this in advance and put some of this into my calculator. You can see if you put 0 in for x, you end up just getting 25 root 3 over 9, which, so this one's actually an approximation to 4.81. I went ahead and put this one in, and I ended up getting 2.72. And then I went and put 10 in here. So this would be like, you know, 100 over 16 plus yada, yada, yada. Okay, and so you can verify these answers on your own. And this is an approximation as well. This is 6.25. So um, when we get back to it, um, part A, I believe, says... Where should the wire be cut to maximize the area, the combined area of the square? And the, so, which one looks like it's the maximum? The maximum is um, this guy right here. This guy's the max. And here's the min. So, for the max, the answer then would be um, use all the wire. See, so x is 10. If x is 10, so let's look at our picture here. Um, if x is 10, you have 10 there and 0 there, so use all the wire where on the square. Use all the wire on the square. You might say that's a trick question because you're not cutting the wire exactly. Math is tricky, isn't it? Okay, and then um, for part B, where should the wire be cut? Um, then you should say, well, I guess it's going to be, you know, we can actually take this exact answer if you want, because in the book they're going to give, you know, the answer in the back as an exact answer when you do the circle in the square. So right there, and I believe we were doing, were we doing meters? Wire be cut. <laughs> no, there was no units on here. Um, so that much for the square, that's, that's what the x value is. Or, you know, if you want, you can round this and say 4.35, you know, for the square. So there's the square right there. And so we're using that much for the square, which will give us the minimum value. So this this is the maximum area and then this is the minimum area. And so once again in your homework you have one where you are doing a square and a circle. And it's going to be very similar. It's, you know, near the end. There are a few challenging problems near the end, but if you've been paying attention to this lecture and you do the simple problems first, you'll have a shot on the challenging problems. You guys have a good day and take care of yourselves.